everyone, welcome to technically episode one of the rebooted Nintendo Prime Podcast new set. If you guys saw our pre-Nintendo Direct podcast conversation piece, you'll recognize what's going on. Uh, to my left and your guys' immediate right in front is Eric Moore. Hello. The co-host of the mostest, the bestest <laughs> Nintendo podcast, really video game podcast in the world. Behind us, he can't see us, so I haven't, you know. He has no idea what we're doing. It's Super Metal Dave 64. How's it going, man? Going good, man. Thanks for having me on. So, if you didn't know, episode one is starting off with a banger. I actually wasn't going to bring the podcast back yet, because as you see, Eric and I are sharing mic. <laughs> we are to have the wrong audio equipment to run two mics right now. But that's not going to stop us, because it took 531 days what we got a Direct. Mm-hmm. A Nintendo Direct. A, a full, fat... 50-minute behemoth. Uh, so that's what this podcast is going to be about. There's no point in it. We're going to have sections. We're just going to talk about the damn direct. And I guess the first thing I have, because Eric was here with me live reacting to this, is, Dave, what's your initial reaction to this 50-minute direct? Like, was it worth the wait? Um, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing, though, I have to admit, just because there wasn't Certain games, there wasn't a certain game there that we all wanted to see. Um, <laughs> a couple certain games. But um, overall, um, I think I would grade it about a C. Just because uh, yeah, I had a, there was a lot of games I really liked, like No, uh, no More Heroes 3 and um, the, the uh, Legend of Mana game and uh, Samurai Warriors 5 and, um, of course, Zelda uh, Skyward Sword HD. Uh, but there was no Breath of the Wild 2, and there was no Metroid trilog- uh, Prime Trilogy. There was no Metroid Prime 4, of course. There's no 2D Metroids. You know, as you know, you guys follow me on my channel. I do, I do a lot of Metroid stuff, so I was hoping for that. Um, <clears throat> but And then there was a lot of fluff in between, of course, and stuff I just wasn't interested in. Um, but the stuff that was there, like the um, um, the stuff they did that I was um uh, interested in was really cool so it was like it was like a an in-between kind of show for me like i i I liked a lot of it but then i also didn't like a lot of it and um i really hoped it was i I was hoping it was going to be a little bit more i guess you know like like the whole problem with nintendo fans of course is because there's so many different types of nintendo brands and like genres (laughs) to enjoy that it's hard to please everybody so like the Splatoon fans got super happy, and since I'm not into into, into that series, I was like, eh, you know, that wasn't that great. But I, that's why I say overall, it's kind of like a like an in between kind of kind of grade for me, like a C C plus. Yeah, I, I think that Nintendo did some interesting things with this direct. I think one thing that maybe caught people off guard is we haven't had a a, a real big Nintendo direct in a, you know in so long that. There were things that happened in this direct that I think we forget happens in other big directs, uh, but we were hoping maybe it wouldn't be the case. Things like they showed off a lot of indie games, and mm. there's nothing wrong with indie games, but Nintendo never abandoned indie games. I mean, we had multiple indie world events over the last year, so it kind of felt like you could have just put this in another indie world and gave us more big announcements uh like we knew you know they they tempered expectations ahead of time by saying hey look it's going to be a lot of updates on existing games uh and you know the the first six seven months of the year and for the most part they stuck to that script beyond splatoon 3 which of course is that one title they always have that one title that goes beyond the promise uh and i was a little surprised it was splatoon 3 but we'll get to that a little later I, i i just think that this direct you know, you, you gave it about a C. Uh, I, I feel like I kind of agree. But then I sat there afterwards and I was counting how many of the games they showed off am I going to end up buying. And I came up with eight titles I'm going to buy. And for me, that's a wow. lot out of one direct. Well, it does help it was 50 yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even like setting aside that it was 50 minutes, like there's a mm-hmm. wide breadth of games that I'm going to buy. I mean, obviously it's between three and Mario golf, which really excited me. I forgot to mention that I'm excited for Mario golf too. Yeah. I'll buy that. Oh dude, they brought back a story mode that has RPG elements. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen that since like what game boy advance. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. The original one. I no, think. that looked, a, 
that looked amazing. Um, that looked like the best looking Mario Golf game I've ever seen. And I mean, the overall, like the whole package of it, the not, not of course, the best graphics, but also like the best looking, like the how you play it game too. It looked really good. Oh yeah, it looked it looked superb. Uh, so there's that game. Obviously, we there was games we knew that, that were going to come up, like Monster Hunter Rise, which they did have new announcements for it. Um, an Apex mode, ramp, ramp Apex monsters. I'm sorry, in Rampage mode. Uh, and that's that's fine. I mean, Monster Hunter Rise is going to be a big deal game. Uh, Monster Hunter World, I think, has successfully popularized Monster Hunter in the West now. Uh, yep. And Monster Hunter was always huge in the East. So I kind of feel like Rise. I don't. Rise isn't going to do world numbers. It's it's just a single platform. But I mean, it's a platform that all the exclusive games sell shitloads. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like, of course they were going to show that off. Um, I, I kept thinking, I guess, me, people obviously had their expectations very, very high, which it's partly on them, but it's also partly on the fact that it's been forever, right? If this would have just been another Direct in the lineup of, of normal Directs, I think people would have felt a little differently about it because we got Splatoon 3 out of it. We got Skyward Sword HD, which not so sure why they're selling it for 60 bucks, other than they're just Nintendo and that's what they do. Um, oh, is, is it sixty bucks? It is yeah. sixty bucks. It checked yeah, it we, out. Had, um, we had to do the. Uh, we looked up the pre-order. Yeah, so it's so the only thing we know for sure is that the game runs at at least seven twenty p. So it's it's at least HD, and I don't think it's, I, I can't foresee it really dipping on the system uh, much. So hopefully ten eighty p docked, but it runs at sixty fps as well, and that's a welcome. Yeah, that looks good. That that that's a big welcome change. But outside of like remapping controls to the right stick, it's the same game. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think about all of you know, Nintendo constantly gets criticized for charging sixty bucks for these ports. But this, to me, honestly, like how is this any different than say porting I don't know Mario Galaxy over and putting it in HD? Except you package that with two other games, and you charge mm. sixty. That's a good question. Like, why, why are we getting it? Yes, they did this on Wii U, Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD. But those also seemingly had way more work put into them than this. This literally just looks like the original game up to HD. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't yeah, look really different. Yeah, thankfully for Skyward Sword, the art style is so good that they uh, can get away with that. And it, it looks really good. Like on Dolphin, for example, that's basically what they're doing, it looks like. That kind of thing, just upresing everything in HD. Yeah, super clean, super nice. The art style really Great. lends to that. Yeah, I mean, I've but yeah, as far as this in 4K on an emulator before, so yeah, they haven't added they added anything though to the game, right? Uh, not that I noticed. Uh, just you no, know, mm-hmm. the ability to use motion controls or not use motion controls. That's it. Six. I mean, that is good. Is is a good change too, but that is good because then you can play it on the go, you know, really easily. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is kind of a cool thing. Well, well, and, well, fundamentally, it's just the same game with remap controls. And the Switch Lite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, oh, and the light. What about the... Oh, yeah. yeah and the, and because the you can't... They, well, I suppose you can have your... Well, they had every game that comes out on Switch from Nintendo has to be playable and handheld because the light right. is only handheld. Right. But can you dock actual... Right. You can't dock the light, no. No. Look, can you attach Joy-Cons as like, or a Pro you can, you can use Joy-Cons with a light, okay. yes. Okay. So it's a little. Do that, I mean, it's a little tiny screen now. Right. I don't know anyone who does it, but yeah. technically, you can sync okay. any Switch yeah. controllers to it and, and okay. use it. So you can do motion controls on the light if you do tabletop mode. Yeah. Or you hack it and get video yeah. out to your TV. Which at that point, why didn't you just buy a normal Switch? Right. <laughs> um, so I, I see your point though. If sixty dollars is kind of a lot. Like a Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, I think were fifty dollars in the Wii U. Uh, so that was, I, I think they were 60 yeah. back then too, but I can't remember the, the, the thing that even if they were 50 or 60, I mean, technically you can argue this is 52, go to Walmart day one, it'll be 50 bucks. Oh yeah. That trick. Yeah. That, that $10 off thing. So like you could still get it for 50, but I, that is what Nintendo was doing. I just look at what they've been doing with switch. Like we got new super Mario 3d world, but we got a whole new mode to the game mm-hmm. for 60 right. bucks. Pikmin 3 Deluxe, we got all of the Olimar additional content. You know, Xenoblade Chronicles mm-hmm. Definitive Edition. We got an entirely new quest line that's you know leads into Xenoblade Chronicles 2. 
Yeah, you, you look at. Uh, I'm trying to think what else game came out this year. I I, I can't remember if they did anything with Tokyo Mirage Sessions. That might have been one. Mm. They didn't add anything new to that. I don't think so. You know, Mario Kart yeah. 8 Deluxe got all the DLC package in the one package. That was the first time that happened. Uh, so like you you kind of look at Nintendo's history of bringing these older games over, and even the games they didn't really change anything in. Well, that would have been Super Mario 3D All Stars. And we got three games for sixty. Yeah, bucks. right. We got the three games. That's the so I like. I was hoping they weren't going to announce the price because I had a theory at first since they didn't announce the price during the direct. That okay, they gave us a launch date, but maybe they're not giving us a price yet because this is the first game revealed of a three D Zelda collection. And that's not the case, of course. They're going to sell it individually for sixty bucks. Could still happen. I, I but doubt. You know, they, they would just be nerfing. Why would you ever buy? Like the, the individual version, if it's no, 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 oh, no, no, no. A, a different Zelda collection. Just do a, a bait but and switch. A bait and switch. Where they, where they, <laughs> you know, and they still show the. Yeah, the, but yeah, you know, they have pre-orders up right now in the eShop. They're taking people's money today. Do you really Skyrim, think so. anybody's gonna complain if they add two games to it for sixty bucks? No, but they're not gonna do that. Nintendo's literally never taken pre-orders and then changed what games are in the pre-order. <laughs> yeah, unlikely. I'm, I'm just saying that sounds very unlikely, very un Nintendo. What Nintendo's doing with Skyward Sword is very Nintendo. Like, no, yeah. Except for uh, the caveat being, what they did with Super Mario 3D All Stars is very un Nintendo. Like, mm-hmm. because they they could have just HD each of those individually and sold them for sixty, mm-hmm. um, and they didn't. So they kind of set a precedent with that, and then they're going back to their old ways. And, I unless they're going with a different three. For and I'm the, part of the problem because I'm going to buy it. Yeah, unless they're going with a different three for a yeah. anniversary edition, and this was just the one that they chose to leave out. I doubt it. I mean, I know some people were hoping for there to be like an Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess package. Which who knows? We'll get into you know. Actually, you know what? Screw it. We're talking about Zelda right now. <laughs> so <laughs> like, just take it. I, I think we can all agree that Skyward Sword is probably shouldn't be sixty bucks. Right. Yeah. But Nintendo's doing Nintendo things and mm-hmm. making it sixty. For no, if this was back on the Wii U, it wouldn't be. They wouldn't be doing this. They'd be wanting you to buy it. You know, they'd be trying to cap- placate more to the fans who are ho- who own the Wii U. They wouldn't charge so much for it. But since this is on the Switch and so it's a, you know successful, they can they feel like they can get away with anything, which they are. It's weird too because Skyward Sword wasn't that successful back on the Wii. Um, mm, it really true. undersold expectations, uh, and it kind of directly led to them going with Breath of the Wild, which. It's kind of funny because you know Eiji and Oma brought that up, and the thing is like, hey, this is the last main big Zelda we made before Breath of the Wild, and changed everything up. And it's like, well, yeah, because this one bombed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to what you expected it to sell on a system that had a hundred million sales. This thing did not sell very well. I mean, right now Nintendo right. can basically shit out a Mario Party that only has four maps, and it'll sell over what Skyward Sword sold. Like, mm-hmm. pretty much anything they put out on Switch right now, it sounds like... like So this is probably going to outsell, I think, the original Sky Resort. But speaking of this, uh, it was interesting with the Zelda part, because obviously AJ and Elmo right away just like, hey, look, we're not talking <laughs> Breath of the Wild 2. It's not happening. We got nothing. <laughs> it's like, look, I know you see me, and you're like, oh, it's Breath of the Wild 2. And no. But um, <laughs> it's interesting because, one, he said, we're, you know, they need more time, but mm-hmm. development's going well, which... I mean, everyone always says that. I don't know if they would ever tell you if development wasn't going well, except... Bayonetta 3, hello, four years, not seen it. Prime 4. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they did reboot that, so I guess development wasn't going so well there. But EJ and was like, nope, development's going fine. Just, you know, we're going to probably talk about it later this year. Which is fine. That's cool. Now we kind of just have that expectation of every director, everything that happens. Okay, is this when they're going to talk about the Wild? Is this when? Is this when? Mm-hmm. Because now we just basically said, look, sometime later this year, we're going to talk about it, reveal it, you know, do more than the initial trailer. Because uh, I, I find it, the thing is, we got that original trailer back at E3 2019 as just a, a shock the world moment. No one expected that after, you know, just a year after the DLC wrapped up. Like, what? this really it was like that twilight princess kind of moment when that was revealed like right after the wind waker came out um so it just shocked people but i find it hard to believe that they had the ability to create what clearly looked like some cut scene or whatever from the game in a, in a trailer and here we are two plus years later and they can't produce a trailer of anything yeah using the same art style mm. and the same engine 
I feel like there's something to this, why they're not showing it right now when they could. Notice something they didn't mention in this direct. By the time you guys hear this podcast, I'm not sure which day it is, but this direct happened four days before the 35th anniversary of Zelda. And they didn't even mention the 35th anniversary of Zelda. Mm -hmm. Didn't even say one word that the 35th anniversary is coming up. Oh, you're right, yeah. Sword HD. They didn't attach it to an anniversary. So, the thing is, they celebrated the 20th, the 25th, and the 30th anniversary. We just got the 35th anniversary for Mario. Uh, They've celebrated the 30th anniversary of Fire Emblem, albeit not in as spectacular of a fashion, but they did. Um, We know it's also the 35th anniversary of Metroid this year, which... We'll see if Nintendo even acknowledges it because they don't really celebrate Metroid like they should, yeah. in my yeah. opinion. But then again, Metroid has mm. never been a huge seller for them, so I don't know. They keep making them, yeah. but they won't give it... Yeah, they, the tr- they should acknowledge it. They got If it got the right treatment, I feel like it would sell better. Um, who knows? Metroid Prime 4, they've hyped up, so we'll see you know, what happens with that eventually. And on Switch, where everything just sells so well. Yeah. Um, I think, God, the trilogy... It, I really thought we were going to get a Metroid trilogy announcement today. Yeah. Not me. I thought it was going to be probably later in the year. Yeah. When, when, I, I didn't I didn't really... Oh, jeez. Uh, Dave, off, you right? remember the exact day? I don't have it in front of me, no, but it's this year. Yeah, I know <laughs> it's this year. I the, And that's the thing. Like I know the exact day for Zelda, but I don't for maybe Metroid. They're, maybe they're waiting until then for a trilogy drop. Maybe. I For Metroid. Well, my thing is, the 35th anniversary is around the corner, and I said that... Oh, it's not... Okay, okay. I found it. It's not till August. It's what? It's August. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe yeah. this summer they could they could maybe reveal Tease something. It. See, my thing is, I always thought they might not talk about the 35th anniversary of Zelda now, because if you look at the way things are going, next week is basically Pokemon City. It's mm-hmm. just Pokemon all the time. 25th anniversary. Pokemon company's going all out. Probably going to get some new Pokemon games revealed. More about the new Pokemon Snap. Mobile games. Trading card information. It, they're just going to go all out because it's what the Pokemon company does. So I was like, maybe they just didn't mention it because, look, Pokemon's doing its thing. Let's not run anniversary celebrations into each other. Uh, plus, technically, Mario is still going on. And we got more a, a new look at the Mario content in Animal Crossing. So right. my thought is, though, that when he says, we're going to do it later, what he means is, hey, look, we're we're clearly celebrating the 35th anniversary. We're just not doing it right this second. Mm-hmm. When we do... Well, it's it's the anniversary year, right? So it doesn't have to necessarily be on the exact date. Yeah, and they, they're the same thing with Mario. They didn't do it on the exact date for Mario either. Mm-hmm. So that my thing is, like, okay, they're going to... They, they, they could... You know, some people like, oh, there'll be a Zelda Direct next week. No, there won't be because of Pokemon. Yeah, no. They're not going to run Pokemon Week and Zelda into each other. They can. They can get away with it, but that just they're not going smart. to. I don't think that, that that's like trying yeah, to take attention so. away from the Pokemon company who's a big partner for them. They're, they're not going to do that. But my thing is like, well, okay, so you wait till March and you throw out a Zelda Direct sometime after the dust is settled and people are you know getting ready for Monster Hunter Rise or whatever they're looking forward to. And you'd be like, hey, look, here, we are doing something for the 35th anniversary of Zelda. We're doing this. Today you can or start pre-ordering. You no, know, they already mentioned like the Joy-Cons and the Skyward Sword. Like, you, Oh, by the way, we also have a custom Pro Controller coming. We also have a custom system coming out with Breath of the Wild 2. Oh, and by the way, end it all, Breath of the Wild 2, either coming this year or coming you know, spring of 2022 or whatever, like they, like they did with... 3d world but the reason i i feel this like there's everything working against them doing this they they revealed skyward sword hd and custom joy cons without a mention of the 35th anniversary which can make you think are they just not going to do anything this year no because i keep feeling like oh they're holding back but then why are we why are we learning about skyward sword hd and custom joy cons right now when those could have been like big things in the 35th celebration to extra blind. Well, when it- um, they want to sell you, they want to sell you Skyward Sword, right? So, well, yeah, I, um, the Skyward Sword thing, I, I, I'm a bit more understanding of because they, it, they can announce Skyward Sword HD, but then if they followed it up with the Breath of the Wild trailer, people won't even be talking about Skyward Sword HD, right? Right, and um, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker are more popular than Skyward Sword, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, so they so. can re- introduce those later in the year. And do Skyward Sword now, and um, right. they they can they they can get your money multiple times. 
Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing saying that Nintendo won't have a collection of games. It's just not going to be the 3D Zeldas, I don't think. I think they're going to bring Twilight Princess HD and the Wind Waker HD over on their own. Yep. Probably resell them to you for 60 bucks based on what they're doing with Skyward Sword. Yeah. What I what I do think they could do is do a collection of the N sixty four games and and maybe Link to the Past third in there or something, as a three three game collection. Classics, yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice. It's a good dream. But <laughs> I, here's the thing: like they already technically remade Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask once on three DS. Mm-hmm. So like to get you know like an HD version of the N sixty four ones like they did with Mario sixty four to me would just be like, but it doesn't look as good as the. 3ds at lower resolution now they you could, could argue that HD, the HD those of, ones instead but the ds version of mario right uh 64 you could argue that looks better than the 64 version kind of like so uh, i i i just don't i don't know i i guess like when i see ocarina of time and majora's mask again i want to see them actually give it the respect those games deserve and like i i don't want them to necessarily find green to see seven it they don't need to go that extreme because they don't need to fundamentally change the game to fit with the times they just need oh, to I rebuild agree. it, yeah, and let the let the gameplay do the talking. I, I wish they did that, but this is Nintendo, so we don't know if they're just going to repurpose them and the, just an HD and say, "Hey, we fixed some textures here and there, like Mario sixty four, and we're done." <laughs> it's sixty bucks. That's, that's, it's sixty bucks. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. But we leave. But but, mm. but you you package those all together, yeah. But those were limited time. Don't These worry. will be sold forever. Right. We threw in the dev <laughs> blocks for free. March thirty first, twenty twenty two, guys. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Anyways, enough, enough on the Zelda stuff. Oh, besides the Joy-Con, what do you guys think of the Joy-Cons? I'm not interested in them personally because they have Joy-Con drift, so I'm not going to worry about those. Same with every Joy-Con, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need a new pair of Joy-Cons because my kids ripped the caps off the top of my joysticks on mine. Uh, I could technically still use them, but it hurts. And I try buying replacement ones and putting them on. That's like the one mm. part of the joystick that's an absolute bitch to put back together. <laughs> so yeah, never went right. And I've tried other covers on it, and it's just no. I need new Joy Cons, and I'm like, every time I'm at the store, I'm like, all right, let me just buy a pair because like I don't really use the Joy Cons that, that often. But when I'm actually on the go, is when I'm going to use it, and I do play on the go True. once in a while. So I'm like, for when I'm in that situation, I want. You know, Joy Cons. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping if I just don't use them enough, they'll be fine. And I have some third party ones that, that they're, they're perfectly fine and acceptable, but they don't fit in any of my Switch cases. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're not, it's not like the Satisfied Grip or something. It's They don't have a case for these ones. But I'm like, I just kept holding out because I'm like, you know what? 35th anniversary Zelda or Metroid, we're getting something themed, something Joy Con. It's happening. Yeah. And setting aside the themed systems. Are these the first themed Joy Cons releasing on their own? Like that aren't just a color change? I don't recall. Didn't they have a Mario thing? They have last Mario year? Joy Cons, but they were just red. I thought they had a Mario sticker on them. I could be wrong. I don't remember. That might have been third party. That might have been third party. Pro controllers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. A lot of but a lot of the Joy Con stuff is like Splatoon did. was just pink and green. Yeah. Like it's been a lot a, of color. Had a pole controller, yeah. And then like, that was the big thing with the Mario Red Switch was like, oh look, they finally color swapped the whole system. But it's mm-hmm. like, but I I think the Skyward Sword ones might be the first time we've had actual, truly Nintendo made themed ones. But maybe I'm wrong. You know what they're probably gonna do? But they're probably gonna have a. Is there a Smash Bros. one? Maybe. Uh. Some of those are just. Mm, right. No, I know. That's why I'm. Looking for actual Nintendo. Because I know they had Smash Bros. Pro Controller. And they had a Smash Bros. Obviously, GameCube controller. They're they're probably going to have a gold Nintendo Switch. Oh my god, don't even... Watch out. They're, it's going to happen and I'm going to buy it. <laughs> they have Mario uh, and Luigi Joy-Con. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are little sideway holders. Yep. Those, those aren't those well, are non-standard. I, but I those are, that's an accessory. I don't see anything that's... Yeah, all, all the Joy-Cons I, I've ever seen Mario just, Blue. Yeah, they're just straight red. Yeah, so I... I don't know. I think, I, I I just think it's interesting that they're finally doing it and they're doing it with Zelda. Why Zelda didn't get a custom console at launch, I have no idea. Maybe they just didn't think the Switch was going to be popular. I have no clue. <laughs> I mean, I can't, can't blame them after the Wii U, I suppose. Yeah, you, know, you never know. Well, what's I mean, happen. yeah. Never the way it was put happen. together. You think you, you think you have a hit, a success, and even though according to Reggie Reggie Fizeman in a recent interview, he's like, "Hey, I knew Switch was going to be a success." Yeah. 
That's why I was okay retiring. <laughs> well, wow. you knew. I don't know if anyone else at Nintendo knew. <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty. I don't know. I don't know, Reggie. But like, yeah, you <laughs> left while it was successful. Did you really think it was going to be successful? Or are you just trying to take credit for, oh, yeah, that's how good I was at my job. I knew. <laughs> When I, I mean, just look at what Reg- back in 2015, I just knew. Right. <laughs> look at what Reggie said throughout his entire career as a Nintendo president. It was always, we're doing amazing. Of course we're successful. It's a, you know, whatever. Even when we're not <laughs> successful, like, hey, like, we're Nintendo, man. We always, Reggie, win. Is the we Wii U- always win in the end. <laughs> is the Wii U a failure, Reggie? No, of course it's not. I mean, if yeah, you look like, at you it, pretty- you know, we had the two years of those losses, but then that was only two years, and the rest of the time, we just make money. Well, it was only yeah. on the market for four years, Reggie. That's half the time it was on the market. You lost money because of it. Well, Semantics. Don't worry about Semantics. that. Semantics. You do it. Have you seen I'll- Breath of the Wild yet? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll... I'll never forget uh, Reggie in twenty like twenty fifteen I think he was like the Wii U has a long life left in it guys and he's like we have a lot of content and then like one year later it's done I- I'm pretty sure they knew at the <laughs> end of twenty fifteen they're like yeah we're we're done with this next year like it just yeah. wasn't selling that's when they made the it decision just... to, to move Sky uh, to move Breath of the Wild over and like, as soon as that decision was made it's like yeah they they gave up they're done. Mm-hmm. They're done. Yeah, They're so throwing we're, in the towel. I've never seen it. See, I don't remember Nintendo throwing in the towel on anything because the only thing that's really happened on was the Virtual Boy. I just oh, yeah. never even saw one of those in person as a kid to even know they threw that the towel was, in. That was more like a cord yank right there. It was like, yank, done. Yeah, rip cord. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I remember seeing but the yeah. Power Glove and Rob, but like you could still see them and buy them actively when I was a kid. And those were just mm-hmm. accessories. So who, no one really cared if those failed. Yeah, I think Labo has has now gone, right? I haven't seen Labo much anymore. I haven't seen stores. Too many Labo at all. Granted, a mm-hmm. lot of things are sold out in general, but um, honestly, I think they never restocked it. After the like, there was a couple boxes I saw at GameStop before the holidays hit, and mm-hmm. I have not seen anything since. Which it's fine that they'll sold, but it's like well, they may be restocked as Switch boxes. I think you can still buy it on Amazon though. <laughs> I'll, I'll check right now. I'm pretty sure you, you can still get Labo on Amazon, but um, I'm sure you can. I mean, I saw. I have a couple. I have. I have the first Labo kit with the piano, mm-hmm. and then I have the VR kit. Um, well, I'll double check here. I mean, yeah, it's it, they're still. You know, they're even discounted prices. They're trying to get rid of it. <laughs> so well, I mean, Amazon can't even sell the Labo. Be nice. So I would say it's probably <laughs> safe that Nintendo's probably not really making Labo too much anymore. <laughs> But yeah. they did have a hit with... I would say Mario Kart Live turned out pretty well for them. Yeah. Yeah, all things considered. Um, I it's have one bad. in my house. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. So, If you've got, if you got the space to use it, it's, uh, it looks pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And it actually surprisingly works on my carpet in the basement. So um, That's what I was worried about. But since it does, it actually it's a lot of fun. Um, all right. So, so I, I guess at, at this point... You know, do you guys think we're getting a Zelda 35th direct or anniversary celebration sometime and say, I don't know, let's give it two months? Or do you think Nintendo might just skip it? Hmm. Uh, I think they're gonna we're gonna have one, but I have no idea when. I think it might be later in the year, maybe in the summertime, or maybe around the time they did with the 35th of Mario, which was like fall. True. Was yeah. that September? That's possible. October, somewhere in there. Those special deals are more. T- inclined to be like a holiday fall kind of like get you to buy with your presents kind of thing like with what they did with mario yeah um so i don't think necessarily they're worried about the date of the the anniversary more than making money so i think they're gonna push that for more like a holiday thing speaking of making money we are so so we have games now like scheduled out through july the skyward sword landing in july so i was kind of looking at the schedule earlier and you know, so basically it goes like Bravely Default 2, um, you know, Monster Hunter Rise, New Pokemon Snap, Mario Golf, Skyward Sword. Uh, and then there's a bunch of really quality titles in between, as we saw. You know, Apex Legends comes out during that period, uh, Fall Guys. We, we, we just saw like a whole bunch of, of really good games along the way. The Ninja Gaiden Collection. Um, it that? kind of feels like this is one of the most packed first half of the year Switch has had yet. 
And people still seem disappointed just because the direct didn't give them everything they ever could dream of. It, mm. it, it's just interesting to me because I feel like Nintendo literally just perfectly set up their first half of the year. They have like a major game coming out every month moving forward until we're probably going to have another direct. Well, uh, what, what do they got first party wise? It's it's a lot of third party, right? They got going. There's some reliance on third party, yes. First party wise, it's Skyward Sword HD, which who knows if they even did that. That could have been a third party. Um, mm-hmm. And then they have Mario Golf. Uh, that I mean, to me, I'm 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 still like Mario Golf made the whole thing for me, to be honest. Was the release date on that again? What? Mario Golf? Uh, golf? The, the release date? Oh, let's see. Uh, June that 25th. is June. June. June twenty fifth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's their June game, um, and I mean, to me, I, I know it's it's a sports title, and they generally are not like giant movers of systems, but I'm excited about it. Oh yeah, because I I've always enjoyed Mario yeah. Golf, and this is one that brought back story mode. So I don't know if it's going to be any good. We'll see. Um, I wish they would have confirmed online play, but mm. then again, they probably sure. would have did it the same way they did it with. Uh, god mario party where it's like oh yeah you can play like one hole together yeah <laughs> why? why can't we golf at least a nine can't yeah. do at least a nine well, no got one okay well you can golf one hole but it's 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 in that dash mode which looks freaking fantastic no, dash mode looks looks great uh um, right but yeah, you yeah can well, only do uh, eric hole. what's your thoughts on, on, on mario golf you're you're a big mario golf fan from back in the day uh, what are your thoughts what did you think because i was more excited than you but you were excited but then you're kind of like how are they messing this up? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, what's the catch? Um, with with the mess up of uh, Crystal Chronicles, it's kind but of that one wasn't of those Nintendo. Things. I know it wasn't Nintendo, but still, <laughs> it's one of those things that it's again, yes. How are they going to screw this up? It's nostalgia getting in in the way, and it's just like, okay, this looks great, this seems great. I'm waiting for the butt. <laughs> so well, you're not going to get a butt in an advertisement. Oh, right. I thought the butt was going to be, here's online, but, like, it's only a really minute part of the game, and you can't actually, like, this dash mode looks great. Can I play it online with friends? Have no idea. No, you can only just randomly full golf. The, you know, the, the mode that you'd want to play with your friends, you can't. Yeah. Like, the story mode, that, fine. That, yeah. that That's an individual story RPG mode. I'm cool. You don't have to play with friends with that. But right. the actual other modes of the game, it's like, yeah, all right, come on now. Like, Nintendo has always been kind of behind the ball with the with online but it's still it's like it's it's right there for the taking and that's what you thought with mario party it's like hey look we get a mario party on switch. oh finally we can play mario party online with the friends oh sure a few mini games but it's literally a board game mm-hmm. how could i not play sure. that online with friends i could play how come ubisoft can give me monopoly uno yeah. all these games on switch that you could play online with people but nintendo can't do like their only board game game unless you count amiibo festival I get it's all it's all cost it's all cost in in line with them uh, developing their games with online in mind. So if they're if they're not thinking about it, then they're not going to put it in there. Or or so. or are you going to take Reggie's old excuse? We believe in couch co-op. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! In the middle of COVID, when we yeah. can't get together, couch co-op is the reason. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're right. What's their excuse for that? Right? Yeah, yeah. If there's not full <laughs> online and it's just like a little middling thing with this, it's like okay. It's still going to be pandemic this summer, and you're not letting us play online with Mario Golf. That would be like people. Most people wouldn't even get to enjoy the modes in the game. Think about it. Like if you get COVID, think how awesome yeah. of it would be. Like you get COVID, and Nintendo could be like, "Hey, it's okay if you're you know it sucks that you're sick and you're down and out, but guess what? You can grab your Switch and play with your friends." Oh wait, except well, you can't. Yeah, I mean, because we don't enable it. Yeah. <laughs> you're right though they they really should be uh they really should be adding that for all their games going forward just because it's such a huge player right like yeah right. right wouldn't you not it's standard besides them just not, their teams being like oh yeah there's online the the internet exists one of the things that i can think of though is maybe their new online infrastructure isn't quite prepared for the amount of people to use it well, okay. Say I bite on that. New Super mm-hmm. Mario 3D World with Bowser's Fury isn't using the new one. It's using the old one. So why can't they just use the old one then? They just because did it with Mar- Super Mario 3D World. With their I don't know, because it's a new game and they don't want to go 
backward. I, I don't. I, I, again, I'm just, I'm just again, we're we're, pro- we're projecting an issue that we don't even know if it exists yet. I, I'm trying. I'm just trying to be <laughs> devil's advocate too. We're so just kind of assuming it is because it's right. Nintendo. That to me is always the butt. Okay, what's the online? Okay, there, right. there's the mess up. There's the screw up. Oh, does it have DRM? Oh no. Oh, mm-hmm. one thing I wanted to mention about DRM. Okay, okay, this is this fits into pretty much anything Nintendo releases. So Nintendo obviously was really pissed off that Super Mario. 3D World Plus Positivity leaked. Okay? And they get pissed off every time this happens because it happens with every game. Either a media member, you know, chucks it up online or if, you know, some retail son of a person at a retailer ends up getting a copy early and and Mm -hmm. leaking. It always ends up happening and people are always playing these games and leaking everything ahead of time. It's been happening on Switch ever since it turned out that it was really easy to hack a Tegra X1 back in the day. Uh, A little bit harder on the newer Switches, but still... If there's so many of the old ones out there, it doesn't really matter. It's going to get hacked. It's going to get leaked. So this is something that I had thought about, and I'm curious on your guys' thoughts to a solution for this. And this, because you know, I kept, I, this whole time that this thing I've happened, I kept thinking, what happens when Breath of the Wild 2 leaks? It's like the nightmare of nightmares for them. Breath of the Wild 2 leaking, and just the whole game's out there, and millions of people are playing it before it's even released. Because that's if there's uh, a lot of story, heavy story elements in it, they're not going to want to get out. And I, I see a lot of brick switches in the future <laughs> if that happens. <laughs> well, Nintendo does try to do that, but the uh, I I think that what what this is something I, I no uh, there's Breath always day one, one there's always day one patches for games right here's my here's my here's my idea people are going to hate this but maybe you should there's always day one patches for pretty much every game in existence right so. Mm-hmm. What if they started baking in to the copies they print out a DRM system that forces you to have to be online to play the game before launch date, and then on launch date you get a patch that takes it away? That would Mm. stop all the leaks until that gets hacked eventually, but it would at least slow it way the hell down. Yeah, but what if you're a a reviewer, you know, and you you have an online issue, you know, Uh, what's going to happen then? Well, tough luck. What's more <laughs> important to the Nintendo? The reviewer having the smoothest possible experience, not worried about DRM, or a reviewer bitching about DRM that people aren't actually going to experience in real life as long as the game doesn't get leaked. Like, what 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 matters more? The game being leaked or the reviewer potentially losing connection with the, with a DRM check they have to do at the very beginning of their, of their gameplay session? They might not even have to do it again after that. It could just be a, a literal yeah. online check quick to boot the game up, then just play. doesn't matter if that. You could literally disconnect from the internet. They might be able to do that. I remember Breath of the Wild on the Wii U leaked uh, before it was released. Yeah. and it, um, That was pretty bad. About that. The, the reps I had at the time were like messaging me and emailing me, did you do it? Did you? I'm like, no. Oh, my God. I didn't even get a review copy. You wouldn't give me one. How could I leak it, right? They thought they sent me a code. And I'm like, no, you didn't. It's okay. Back in the Zelda and, former days, I'm like, you didn't actually send me a code. I requested one, and you said, we'll see. They were really, yeah. they were not happy that happened. That's why I'm like, when we get into the fact that, you know, another Zelda game's coming around, a lot of games when they leak, it's not as big of a deal. Like, Super Mario 3D World leaking, not too big of a deal, even though Bowser's Fury gets spoiled a little bit, because it's mostly a gameplay experience uh, mm-hmm. than it is story. But, like, Nintendo doesn't have a lot of heavy story-driven games, except for games like Fire Emblem games like uh obviously zelda and you know even the pokemon company gets absolutely pissed when their games leak (laughs) like they just start nuking retailers and yanking copies and canceling pre-orders like pokemon company hates when things get leaked so my thing is like i kind of feel like there is a positive side to a temporary pre-release drm people always view drm as the absolute devil and for the most part i agree i get us to stop piracy but honestly, once a game's out there and it's public and you can purchase it, if people want to pirate the game, they're going to figure it out. But I think yeah. pre-release to slow it down, especially when you know your system's been completely hacked and you can't do anything about those hack switches for the most part, because as long as they don't connect to the internet, you can't brick them. But you require yeah. that, oh, to launch this, you need to, you need to connect to the internet quick. I mean, I can see them doing that. How many switches they could brick by doing that? too that's how they get a brick and a bunch of switches oh you connected oh your switch is hack bricked yeah <laughs> that would be funny 
Because people would be like, oh, we don't care. Oh, we got to connect quick to play Breath of the Wild 2. Let me just hit the Wi-Fi button on quick, and your Switch is done. Don't know how many people are happy that their hack switched like right away. Risk turning on their hack switches at that point if they had that, that mm-hmm. ramen. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the Wii U version. Or sneaky, if in pre-release copies, the the when, whenever you go to boot up the game, it actually goes into the file system and turns your Wi-Fi on. Right. That would be yeah. even that would be really sneaky because the only people that should care about that are people who hack their switches that Nintendo doesn't want you illegally playing their game anyways. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the, the Wii U version of Breath of the Wild leaked, but the Switch version, of course, didn't because the Switch wasn't out yet. Switch. So it was like not enough media members even had. There was very few media members with the Switch pre-release. They were very careful mm-hmm. about that, um, and obviously yeah. none of those Switches were hacked at that point either. So, um, so that's kind of just an idea I have when DRM came. I'm like, oh, you know what? I actually thought about this. Like, I don't. I don't like DRM. I think it's pointless and it hurts real consumers. But a DRM that's patched out day one. The only thing I could think of are people that don't have internet and might buy it. But then I keep thinking, how many people could buy a Switch that don't have access to internet anywhere? Especially if you put like a thing in the box when you buy it. Because if you're buying it online, well, you bought it online, so clearly you have access to the internet. If you bought it in person, you could literally just have like a little instruction thing in the pamphlet saying, hey, if you don't have internet, you know, go to a free Wi-Fi hotspot quick, update the game and be done. It's a little 10 megabyte download. Yeah. Play the game. Mm-hmm. Like it could even put it on the box, like online check required, at, you know, or whatever. I don't know. Like I know it's going to be a big controversy, and people are going to piss about it. I'm like, well, how else is Nintendo going to stop leaks? They can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, yeah, they have the day one patches and the day one updates, but that's not really DRM. So yeah, and like sometimes though, they won't have like the online modes available, like before mm-hmm. the game launches. It's like their way of, oh, we're really going to hold, we're going to restrict the online gameplay. But it's like, but. They already have the game anyways. They'll just set up a private right. server and play anyway. So what? Yeah I, yeah, I don't know. It's just an idea because as we're getting into a full year, directs are back. We're getting a bunch of major releases. I'm like, man, Monster Hunter Rise is going to leak. Mario Golf's going to leak. Skyward Sword. Oh, it definitely will leak. Skyward Sword yeah. leaking to me isn't that big a deal since they didn't even add anything new to it. But Skyward Sword is going to yeah, leak. Yeah, it's already leaked. <laughs> right like bravely like, default 2 is going to be out there like it and, and i'm sure third parties might appreciate it as like an idea like i'm surprised nobody at nintendo has actually come up with this idea like hey why don't we try this maybe i mean i guess they're worried about backlash but actually come to think of it i think every single rom of the new releases that are bigger or big biggie or whatever they have leaked lately yeah because, because for the switch all, all you need is someone with a hack switch to get a hold of a copy one way or another, they dump it. It's over. Yeah, that's it. Once you get on the um, online, it's out there. Clearly, some retailer somewhere, somewhere has the hookup, and they keep getting the hookup, and they keep not getting caught. Yeah. And I know Nintendo's tried clever things. They've tried putting like um, undetectable codes in in the game files, so like they could track down where that specific copy came from. But yet, they still haven't stopped it, even though they have that. You know, yeah, their consoles way are being denied copies. So it's like, is it literally like straight off the manufacturing line? Does someone have the hookup? Like, yeah, not only that, but they have em- China. You know, they have emulators out there too that run the Switch no problem. So it's like you find those ROMs, you can run the game without even having the Switch. Yep, <laughs> that's that. I mean, it's bad. It, it, it's really bad out there, and I I kind of feel bad. Uh, oh, I, I feel bad in so much for... I don't feel bad when certain games leak because it's like, whatever. You know, like I said, with Skyward Sword leaks, it's whatever. We already know all about that game. But, mm. um, you know, I do feel bad for developers when you spend all this time trying to hype up a game to a certain point where everyone's going to have this worldwide experience at the same day. And then it's kind of like taken away where people got to avoid being on the internet, avoid going on social media for weeks at a time, leading up to the launch of a game when they should be hyping up with other fans leading up to the launch of a game. Um, and I see this come sure. up in a lot of my live streams where it's like, I, I get it. Like, I don't know, unless they do DRM, I don't know how they're going to stop it until they replace the Switch with next gen and they make a Switch that's harder to hack. I don't know you know, what they're going to do because as long as the games keep coming out on the OG Switch, they're kind of screwed. Yeah, I think they will do that for the new Switch. I think they will make it better like that. Eric, were there any other games that stood out to you from this direct? Um, no, Mario Golf was the one. Mario sure. Golf was the one. I did like that that zombie game. That one looked 
pretty fun. I was trying to figure out what it was called again. Not the Plants vs. Zombies. No, 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 no. The, the other, other one. one. Um, I don't remember that one. It was it was some indie game yeah, looked, where you were a zombie goofy, and you were turning looked, everyone else into goofy. zombies. Uh, Stubbs the Zombie. Rebel Stubbs the Zombie. There you go. Oh, yeah, okay. That one looked, that one looked funny. <laughs> and It did look I mean, funny. It, it looked like a game for you. Right. Um... I know you were super excited about uh, Legend of Mana. Legend of Mana. Well, I'm, I'm a big really Mana good. series. Looks fan. good. Um, I'm a huge Mana series fan. I know so. we used to play it back in the day. Oh yeah. So well, Secret of Mana used to be my favorite game, and then they brought over the third one, and now we get this one. So I'm I'm stoked. I'm that stoked. art style looks really good. Oh yeah, it, it's straight out of my childhood. I love it. Straight out of our childhood, to be completely honest. Yeah. It's not like yeah. we're all you know so far apart. Um, uh, Dave, was there any, uh, other games besides the big ones that really stood out to you? Um, I, I can't think of anything in particular right now. Um, Triangle Strategy, the clearly Octopath Traveler sequel. Yeah, but I'm not really into the, those type of RPGs necessarily. And they, they kind of made that um, into... They, it's weird. They changed it into like a Fire Emblem style combat system too. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really into that per se. The art style looks fantastic. I love the art style. It's beautiful. Literally Octopath Traveler all over again. <laughs> right. But like as far as the gameplay, I'm not really too interested in that. But No More Heroes 3 looked really fun. Like the gameplay looked really cool. I, I, I like the, addition, the additional type of uh, combat maneuvers they have in that. So I'm, I'm really interested in No More Heroes 3. No More Heroes 3... Uh, a lot, a lot of No More Heroes fans have been like waiting for a real look at the game because we've had like these weird gameplay, like really weird teases. I don't. That's just what the, the what the guy behind this game does. He's always been really eccentric at how we. <laughs> I love that guy. I love him. I I, I met him at E3. The was it the first gameplay for No More Heroes three showed off in the background with him in the foreground talking, yeah, like covering up seventy <laughs> percent of the screen. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on? That's just, like, that's just um, what he does. Is that kind of like digital? Have you guys for- have you guys played it on the Switch? No more Heroes One and Two. I I have not played it on the Switch, but I have played the games. I have not. Oh, okay, good. I yeah, that game is all about the uh, the style, you know, and the uh, in your face uh, dialogue. It's just like really funny. Yeah, and I think what was great about seeing that finally, like, I, I saw some people in the chat while I was streaming it being like, finally we get to, like, really look at this game instead of these weird teases here and there. And right. I think what what was nice about the No More Heroes 3 trailer is it, it made people relieved. I think almost every No More Heroes fan that saw it was like, all right, that's what we wanted. Okay, we're good. Like, it, you're always worried a little bit because, like, the last... You know, Travis touchdown, the last strikes again thing wasn't necessarily what people wanted, but here's this. This is what exactly right. what we wanted. We're good. <laughs> yeah, this looks good. They're not screwing around now. They're making a real No More Heroes, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Anyone excited That's for what you Hades, want. Hades Physical Edition? I don't know if any of you guys play Hades. Um, I'm not. I'm not excited for it, but I mean, I've. it's just, it's a, it's a good game, but yeah, I have. No, it's 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 good, but I'm not interested in buying the physical version. So that's just but yeah. I, I think the physical well for mega fans, the physical version is a big deal because it comes with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, the art book and the and right. uh, I think a soundtrack. I think yes, the yes. The with, soundtrack too. and cover, uh, cover art. Uh, the, to me, I I've seen the game played. Looks like a fun game. Um, I don't really care too much about the uh, physical release, but the box art is fantastic oh. on that thing. Yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. beautiful. No, it it is gorgeous. Like if people just want a, a collector's item, and they, yeah, it's one of the best indie games around. So, um, I got something. One. What's up? I have one. Let's talk about the most WTF. Why is this here? We learned absolutely nothing. Star Wars Hunters. <laughs> yeah, what was that about? Well, I, I'm not even. Like, <laughs> does that game exist anywhere? Have we seen this game anywhere? I don't remember Star Wars. So, Star Wars announcement trailer. Yeah. No, no. Weird. No, this is like the first time they've they've unveiled this game. Yeah, this is the unveiling of Star Wars Hunters, which I assume is going to be a multi-platform. Multi- well, I don't know. It's made by it's made by uh, a mobile developer. It's um, a multiplayer shooter coming later this year. Yeah, it's made by a but, mo- it's made by a mobile developer. Let me let me look at the end of the trailer here. I was Which is like 5 <laughs> seconds long, so it's not that Right. Hard. The same guys who made Modern Combat. Okay, so it's made by Zynga 
uh, or or published by them. It's either made by Zynga or Natural Motion Games. So those are both mobile developers. So did they make Modern Combat? Oh, I think I think I think so actually. <laughs> I think so. Modern Combat. Remember that that was like the only military shooter we could play. Oh my gosh, that was that was those are the sad days. <laughs> Uh, published by Game Loft. Developed no, Game Loft was no. behind it. Okay, so uh, okay, they 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 do iOS. Zynga, Zynga mm. is uh, God. They're one of those Candy Crush or one of those other games out there. Um, that they're behind mm-hmm. that. Uh, but like so, it's to me, it's like it's gonna be a mobile game that's also on Switch, and that's why they didn't show us anything. They just said, "Here's a mm-hmm. hey, I Switch mean, is getting a Star Wars game." Yeah. I'm watching the trailer right now. It it's a door really, that opens. Yeah, it really you go didn't through. show you a whole lot. Oh, there's some lightsabers, some ghosts, and then a lightsaber lights up in the background, and you're done. You know nothing about this game. Have a good day. Yeah, right. It's like it to me. It's basically like when they announced Bayonetta three. Mm-hmm. Here's a CGI thing of Bayonetta like looking at the camera, and then she shoots her light gun, and hey, you're getting Bayonetta three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mean okay? So she's doing what she does in every other game. Can we? No, not, nothing unique here. Oh, yeah. oh, we're back to the old, the old hairstyle. Okay, okay, that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, next. <laughs> I mean, I'll give them oh. this. It's slightly, slightly better than Metroid Prime 4's reveal. That was just a logo. Just logo. Yeah. Because <laughs> at least here we got a logo, and then you got some stuff you can at least speculate on, like certain Star Wars characters that appear yeah. in the holographs. So, like, at least there's something to speculate on. But I mean, that's a mobile. But you don't know what the game is. You just know that yeah. at first you get excited, then you see Zynga, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> this is the Star Wars game they're giving us. They're giving us they're giving us what's gonna be a mobile game on, on Switch. So they're not the only ones, by the way. There's a ton. If you guys ever go in the eShop, there's actually a ton of like phone games on Switch. Oh, I know. And most of yeah. them don't work very well because they didn't take into account anything about the Switch. It's like, oh Switch also has a touchscreen. It's just like a phone, so we'll just slap it on there. Yeah. Eshop is a cesspool for that. Like we can charge money for this when we have to make it free to play on the other one, so we're gonna charge you a dollar or two dollars for it, and charge you microtransactions on top, or you just download it for free on your phone. Yeah, right. But it's and true. have a better gameplay experience because it was never built for Switch. But yeah, all I remember <laughs> uh, after that after that trailer is like, what? Yeah, I didn't even realize it was Star Wars at first. I kind of looked away because it was so yeah. quick. Yeah, it was. So, I think maybe one of my kids watched in the door, and I'm like, "This is yeah. such a quick thing that I missed." Yeah. How do I miss a Star Wars announcement? Oh, yeah. Hunters. Oh, we saw yeah. no gameplay. Yeah. Okay. What What's the point? It was. It was definitely yeah. jaw dropping. What? <laughs> like thirty seconds, right? Less than thirty seconds. Not. Uh, twenty six. I, I think. Yeah. I think I looked in. Yeah, you know, it, at your screen, it said twenty six. Yeah, it was. Um. You know one one Zelda thing we've got to talk about. Age of Calamity oh, DLC. Yes. Uh. Mm-hmm. Either of you play Age of Calamity? I have not. Nope. Nope. I mean, it's got to be in the not. Warriors games. Or it's not really worth it, to be honest. Even No matter how big a Zelda fan you can be, it's cool. Like, just... I always tell people, like, if you are if you don't like Warrior-style games, don't buy Hyrule Warriors or any of the Hyrule Warriors games. It's not going to make you like it. Um, if you just care about the story, go watch the cutscenes online after it comes up. Yeah, I played the Wii U back when it came out, and that was it. Like okay, that's enough for me. Yeah. So I mean, this one was a lot more story driven um, than the original Hyrule Warriors was. Not surprising since Nintendo had more direct involvement. Um, but I, it is cool that they're doing DLC. No surprise. Twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, two passes mm-hmm. plus a pre order bonus. They did the same for Wii U and yeah. and the uh, too. Right? That, same for Wii U, and I think they did it for Fire Emblem Warriors too. Mm-hmm. Um, the Warriors games are known for a really beefy twenty dollars DLC pack, so um, not too surprised. Apparently, although it teases zero story stuff in these, they note in the press email that there are new story elements added in. So, for people mm-hmm. that care about potential canon stuff, that they could maybe link to Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild Two. Um, technically, there's going to be some new story elements being added in. So. That's my that's my primary interest in it is just the new story stuff. I think is I really enjoyed um, Age of Calamity. I think it was better than the original Hyrule Warriors. Uh, but maybe okay. I always think maybe the reason it was better is I feel like the characters had a better variety of attacks, mm. and that's what made it more fun. Um, 
they really tailored it to like like the four champions felt like you would think the four champions should feel like. Um, mm-hmm. So I, that to me was really the champions really was what sold me. Then you have the other playable characters, which is whatever. Yeah, some people love games. That's yeah. I mean, I think I think they're really good, but I mean, if you're not into hack and slash, it's literally a hack and slash. So yeah, for sure. It's like it's like trying to get you know Super Metal Dave into Octopath Traveler when it's just not. It's just not going to click. <clears throat> you, need, you need Final no, Fantasy I, I, VII, not not that, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what games you play in the RPG realm. So, no, I, to, I like the additional JRPG stuff, but the strategy stuff, like Fire Emblem type stuff, mm-hmm. the, the you know going about the map and everything, I'm not really into that. Yeah, and a grid and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just kind of glancing at some of the other stuff that was. Uh, reveal that we could talk about the other left field um one what like one Metopia. Meto okay you guys remember Metopia? the 3ds I, game i really didn't yeah i do did you play i was it? not interested no i never played it <laughs> but i remember when they were advertising it because like back then you could meet reggie uh eiji Nomu, shigeru miyamoto and satura iwata in the game and like get to know things like their favorite foods and like literally you could meet them in the game like it was really really cool well they didn't do that this time around they didn't say you can meet any of them now it's just all about your friends which is what it really was about anyways but metopia was such a weird game yeah and it's bad like Hmm. who i'm sorry you guys watching i want you to look me in the eye right now and tell me oh yeah metopia that that course that was coming I didn't no. see it. Uh, I didn't see it. That really obscure 3DS game about me's and interacting. It's got battles, but then like you can get pissed off at people and not fight. <laughs> I what? That's, that's the last the thing. Game, that's like the it. game we're getting. Okay, we are. Metopia lives on. Next thing you're gonna tell me we're getting another Rusty's real deal baseball. I'm trying to think of oh, what other I didn't actually. Thing. I thought I actually thought that game was fun. It was fun, but so was Metopia. It's just one of those weird games that you just don't see Nintendo making, and then they just do it and throw it out there. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I would fully expect a new Nintendogs before we got this. Oh yeah, what happened to that game, that series? Damn, it's massively popular. So like, I'm totally that or another Wii Sports kind of game. Yeah. But no, here we go. You mm. know, not I, I was gonna say almost a Wii Fit kind of game, but they they kind of did that with Ring, Ring Fit, Fit. So, but uh. Maybe they're just bringing the Mies back in the into play so they can bring. Yeah, right. They like. Wii I felt like they abandoned and, Mies, and now like, oh, let's bring them back. Now we can bring them back so we can bring the Wii Sports over. We oh boy, them, that's what it is. They're setting up. They're, they're setting, setting up, up the, the Wii versions of games coming now. Yeah. They're, they're they're setting it up. Draw. We're getting scared. Here, watch out. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Motion comes the Mies. Them back, baby. <laughs> to be fair, I actually like the motion controls in Skyward Sword. Maybe they'll be less shit. On the Switch. <laughs> we'll see. There's not a lot of motion control games on Switch to really know how well the motion controls that... work. But they should be. You would assume the technology, the gyroscopes and all that. And the, the accelerometers. Are, are, are better, yeah. but yeah. who knows. Um, otherwise, like, just going through it, you know, it, anyone care about the, the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection at all? Uh, me, not really. No. Yeah, I, I didn't grow up playing Ninja Gaiden, so I don't really have much affinity but i know some people are happy about that i like the originals on the nes but not the uh, i i like i like the original games but the the, like the new stuff i'm not really too into those yeah i know there's a there was a few people in our chat when we were doing our reaction video for, uh, that, oh they were, they, were, they were hyped about that there were like, a few people that were hyped on it so. um so i guess one thing we haven't talked about is what they kicked off the whole show with oh yeah smash bros <laughs> oh we got a new character Shows how much we care about that character. <laughs> now we haven't talked about it yet. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm assuming. Maybe I shouldn't put thoughts into your guys' minds. Maybe you really do care about this, but we just forgot about it. Um, uh, for character for Smash, which is everyone thought we were going to get a new character reveal. It's another sword fighter, uh, but it's basically Pyra and Mithra as one character. That you can swap between the two. Um, for those who don't know. If you don't know who Pyro Mithra is, because you know Eric wasn't obviously aware, he he has never really played the Xenoblade series. Uh, it is they are characters from Xenoblade Chronicles two, um, mm-hmm. and that's really all you need to know. Go play the game if you want to know more. I don't really want to like the Xenoblade games are very heavy story, so I don't really want to spoil anything 
for, for those that haven't played those games. But, um, yeah. And no, not like the same game like Shulk. A lot of people know Shulk from the OG. This the Rex, the one that has Rex in it, the guy with the blue suit. Um, that's yeah. where that's where these these characters came from. And I know because I I've played. I haven't beat it yet, but I've played Xenoblade Chronicles too. Um, you guys, you, what do you guys think about that character edition? I mean, Eric, I know it's probably going to be completely indifferent because he's never heard of it in his life. Pretty much. How about you, Dave? Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two is my least favorite of the series, so I'm not interested, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, and it was like the best selling one, so I'm not really surprised they they, they threw it yeah. in. Like, I know some people are upset because it's like another sword character, but it's like, yeah. I mean, welcome to Xenoblade. I well, <laughs> some people were saying, oh, it's another anime character. I'm like, it's a Nintendo IP. What? Yeah, right. I mean, it's like complaining there's another cartoon character. If it's from a Nintendo, I have a hard time complaining about characters that come from Nintendo IPs in a Nintendo fighting game. Yeah. Even if I... Pe- people... I might want Waluigi instead, but I'm not going to complain that a different Nintendo IP character got in. Like, mm-hmm. there's going to be lots of fans of that character, and it's part of Nintendo's history, so... People were hoping Dante or Sora was going to be in there, but... Hey, maybe next time. Yeah, I mean, we're not done. There, I think there's, what, three fighters left? Not really. I think so. So, there's still hope. They've been getting some third parties in there. Uh, we'll see. I They've been kind of going with this every other um, third party, first party, third party, first party. So, we'll see. I'm expecting a third mm-hmm. party character next. I don't know. You know, I don't know if Sora can ever get in. I, I would Maybe not. I would love to have Sora in, yeah. but there's also, you guys got to remember that, like, Kingdom Hearts isn't just about Square Enix. Disney's involved. Mm-hmm. So yep. Disney's very protective of things. So it's licensing. Even though like I, I would assume the rights to Sora are owned by Square, I don't know. And none of us should know because we're not involved in making the games. <laughs> so like, Right. And and to have Sora in the game with a keyblade but have no reference to the Disney characters would just feel wrong. Like, like a final smash has to have the Disney characters. And is Disney oh, gonna God. be cool with that? Mickey and Smash. Woo! After all, remember, Nintendo partnered with Universal, not Disney. Yes. For their Nintendo theme parks. Yes. So like that's also Disney has a lot of shade like that behind the scenes. Like, oh wait, you work with our competitor. F you. Um So I don't know that you should ever expect sorry. Dante? Different story. That could happen. Dante I think could happen. Based on the other characters we've got, Dante could happen, but Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I you know for those of you who are excited about it, great. Hey, we talked about it finally. You've probably been waiting this whole podcast to hear us say something about the Smash Bros. stuff. <laughs> yeah. We did it. Congrats. Char- I'm, character I'm, models I'm, are- ha- I'm happy for you guys. Character I recognize who it was right awesome. away. Oh, the character models? Well, they're a little bit more reserved well, than yeah, in the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's just say the book they have to be. is covered in yeah. the original game. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But they got to consider that like this is not... The, the, like there's like five year olds playing this game, right. which granted the funny thing is five year olds are the ones that are going to care the least because they don't really understand. Right. Okay, so there's some boobies. All right, mom has boobies. What's the, what's the difference? Yeah. But uh, you got to worry about I guess maybe about the horny teenagers that might jack off during a. Uh, hey, do you don't don't tell me yeah. teenagers don't jack off to weird I, crap. I, okay. I'm not saying a word. Dude, I've I've walked in on some people when I was growing up. The the weirdest of things they're looking at. So. <laughs> Smash Bros. would not surprise me. Okay, I've seen enough people yanking it off to Bowsette. So, um, oh lord, kids do the darndest things. Bowsette, <laughs> kids say the darndest things. Kids do the right. darndest things. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that leaves us with the big announcement at the end. Splatoon three. Dave, oh. got any thoughts on Splatoon three? Not probably. Um, it looks really good, like graphically. Like if that's actual, like in game stuff. I don't think it is though. Some of it not in game, but I feel like towards the end it was in game, right? Yeah, I mean it looks, yeah, it looks really good for a Splatoon game. I'm just not particularly interested in that series. It came out in 2015 on the Wii U. I never really got into it too much. So, but it, for Splatoon fans, it's amazing looking. I'm sure the fans will love that game. Well, what's, what I found interesting is we weren't sure if Splatoon was going to be like Smash and Mario Kart, where you get one per generation, because we've only had two of them. Now we know. We're getting one during the Switch era again. So 
That means, hey, you can get as many Splatoons as you want. What I kind of find funny, and maybe I'm just sick-minded, I look at that Splatoon 3 logo, and I'm sorry, I can't help but see a penis that wraps yeah, into a 3. Yeah, yeah, I see. I'm sorry. I'll throw it up on screen for you guys. Tell me that it does not look like a penis wrapping into a 3. I get that it's a squid, but I mean, they could have did something better. Less provocative. And the moment someone points that out to Nintendo, it'll probably change. What was that, that Mario level that they had, that that kind of thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're clearly one of the designers of that level made a dick and balls. Yeah. 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 And I yeah. can't, I still, hey. hard to believe they left that in too. So maybe Nintendo's, Nintendo's cop here. They don't care. Yeah. Nintendo's just being like Disney. What? That, that's what Disney does. <laughs> Dude, Disney does it a lot. They're doing the same kind of stuff as Disney. A lot. And children never notice. They're oh, yeah, too no. innocent. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, just to kind of recap some of what we know, that they gave some PR about this. Uh, it said, you know, in this new game, in the Splatoon series, you'll leave Inkopolis, which is where we've been uh, for the last couple of games, and you go to a new region called the Splatlands. Uh, at its heart is a new city where battle-savvy Inklings and Octolines gather called Splatsville, also known as the City of Chaos. Splatoon 3 introduces various new features to the action shooter series, including weapons such as the bow weapon, which we did get to see a little tease of mm-hmm. at the very beginning, uh, and then customization options and new movement abilities to bring the returning 4v4 Turf War matches. Uh, more information about the full-fledged sequel coming to Switch in 2022 will be revealed in the future. So it looks like, you know, they're doing what, even maybe more changes with this game than they did between Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. Um, I I like play the hell out of Splatoon. I did it on Wii U, and I and I did it again on Switch. And I will say this: out of every game I've ever played on a live stream, Splatoon Two is the one that like just really everyone enjoyed, even if they didn't like it. They just it, mm-hmm. as a live streaming game, Nintendo has like found a way to make a competitive game that can also just be absolutely silly and nobody cares. Mm-hmm. but also as serious yeah. as you want kind of like smash in a way um so like yeah it's it's just it's a lot of fun i really enjoy it um i honestly i was shocked but maybe i shouldn't have been i don't know i always thought we were gonna get like another mario kart or something before we ever got a splatoon 3 or you know even like an arms 2 which i expect is going to exist someday uh but splatoon is obviously a much bigger deal than arms so mm-hmm. I mean, I think Mario Kart's a thirty, like a thirty million seller Mario Kart. So I think they're gonna wait for a new console. See, I was thinking about that thirty million seller thing, right? Because some people expected Mario Kart Nine today, and I nah. think that there's two ways they go about it. One, we're just not getting Mario Kart Nine. They'll launch the next system with it. Okay, fine. Uh, or, or Nintendo. Whether or not we want to believe this, Shintura Furukawa recently came out and said, hey, we're just entering the midway point of the system. Well, as of March 4th, that's the first day of year five. The very first day of year (laughs) five of Switch. So if we're at the midway point, that gives us at least four more years. They can Mm. release Mario Kart 9 literally next year and just still sell 30 million of that over three years. And I think it all depends on Nintendo's strategy. They could sit on Mario Kart 8 and who maybe it gets to 40 million someday. I have no idea. But they could sit on it or Nintendo can continue to make the library. Like, I think I, I, I'm of this mind that Nintendo's made a mistake in almost every generation where for the final mm. year of a system, they just stop making games and don't care. And they just say, nope, we're waiting for the next one to launch. Feels like they do that every single time. Yeah. And I hate that. Mm. Why? Like, I'd rather them take on the Sony strategy where like some of the very best games on the platform come out in that last year. Then you just remaster them the first year for the next system. But like, I want to see Nintendo maybe look at it as we don't have to wait for Mario Kart 9. Just drop it now. We can do a deluxe version on the next system. Like you did with 8. Yeah. Get package all the DLC in. Like, I want to see them just continue to release bangers, which again, Splatoon 3 is a banger. It's going to sell very, very well. Could sell over 10 million. Like the second one did. It's a big deal game. You know, it's that they, I hope they, this is a trend that we're going to see them keep releasing big games. So not only does the switch live up to the, Hey, look, it is going to be an eight year platform minimum that 
they're going to keep releasing big games leading all the way up into the next gen. So then it, it's more of a seamless transition where, hey, we had something, oh, here's our new system. Go get that if you want mm-hmm. to play, you know, the new Zelda game next year or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it depends on what you want to consider their new system. You know, they're not waiting until 2025 or 2024 to release a new a new upgraded Switch or something, so. The, yeah, the... That's a that's a whole other story, but like. Well, the moment that he said, uh, "Hey, look, we're entering the midway point," I'm like, "Okay, so you think there's four or five more years? That's the case. Switch Pro is happening. We we can't go five years without another Switch." No, it's a mobile console. It's just it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, Nintendo always upgrades their mobile consoles. Yeah, it, there, there's going to be some. I mean, I think it's going to come this year. I think it's going to come for holiday of this year. But what do I know? We've been thinking every year it's going to come, and then it doesn't. So yeah. we'll see. There's been well, so mean, much smoke. For Rokawa, has been talking a lot about hardware lately, and he's and he continues talking about this hardware all the time. Like, why are you talking about hardware so much? You know, like, well, working on hardware. We're always making new hardware. We're always this. We're always that. And, oh, hey, we don't have anything to announce soon. Well, okay, <laughs> soon could be like a week, or it could be six months. Like, yeah, this year he's. It's a little bit, a little bit too much, in my opinion. A little bit too much of a, you know, over the hump there, <laughs> for what? I like, I, I here's the thing: they're not going to talk about it now, guys, because they're trying. To, the switch is selling out. Why would they meant, mention a new switch right now? Yeah. But that's why I think you know, once the dust settles, the switch is easy, relatively easy to get in every form on shelves, right before the holidays. Hey, look! Oh, Breath of the Wild Two is coming. By the way, we have a custom. Switch Pro system launching with Breath of the Wild 2, and that's also the launch date of Switch Pro. Have a good day. Mm-hmm. Something like Or whatever, yeah. It could be a different major game they do it with. but Or Prime Trilogy or whatever they're doing. Yeah, whatever it is. Hey, you and the Prime Trilogy. Yeah, yes. <laughs> trilogy to happen, so I'm not, Nothing wrong with I'm that. not knocking you there. It's just uh, The Metroid games just haven't been as big of a deal as Nintendo probably wants them to be. but Yeah, well, I mean, because they're not releasing them. <laughs> big deal. Like, if Mario mm-hmm. Golf goes on to sell over $5 million, I'm sorry. Like, then we need to start. Uh, Any I- Didn't Paper Mario? That needs to come back. We need didn't to- Paper Mario sell over $3 million? Paper Mario? Oh, Paper Mario, yeah. Yeah. Did, did it- I think it sold over $3 million, and that wasn't wasn't even that great. Let me let me look. I think the new Paper Mario on Switch is actually the best-selling one in the series. Um, yeah, and, peop- and I don't even think that's that great of a Paper Mario game. But, you know. Hey. <laughs> uh, let me see. Back in November, it was at two point eight two million, so probably over three after the holiday. Yeah. For that's amazing for that series. Fastest selling uh, game at the time when that, when that Paper Mario out. for Paper for Mario yeah. games, yeah, for Paper Mario. Games. So, so Metroid, Metroid Prime Four that could easily get over five million, six million, seven million easily. Uh, that would get that would be a record for Metroid. Um, there's. Mm-hmm. You know, I always think, like, this is, like, the time. With how successful Switch is and how long they want the lifespan to be, I'm like, this is now. Like, we should be getting F-Zero coming back. Yeah. We should get a real dedication to a new Star Fox game coming back. Like, now's the time. A real Star Fox? All these obscure franchises are going to sell on this system. Mm-hmm. So what are they waiting for? Mm. Well, I... The only thing I said, what are they waiting for, is 2020, obviously, was kind of a weird year. Weird year for everyone, to be honest. Um, and Nintendo just kind of rested on their laurels. They released a couple of big games, and they just kind of left it at that, relied on ports. Um, and I, I try to be nice to them because, you know what, everyone was affected by the pandemic, and Nintendo is a company that's been known to slow react to changes in the industry. So, like, as everyone, as the rest of the energy figures out how to still release AAA games during COVID, Nintendo was probably still trying to figure out how to set up home computers to make, to keep programming. Because that's just, Nintendo's always behind um, in that regard. Yeah. So, I kind of said, look, 2020 is kind of the reset year. we got to figure out how to make this work when we can't always be in the office. So, they took the whole year to figure it out. Now we're getting the games. Uh, and they're kind of back on track from what I can, and uh, granted, not a ton of Nintendo first party games talked about in this direct. Yeah, uh, Mario Golf and uh, Splatoon Three. Yes, yeah, Splatoon Three, which isn't coming. Zelda Skyward Sword is a dolphin port, so potentially they did Skyward Sword <laughs> HD in house because it, it doesn't look like much was done to it. So potentially, maybe part of the Zelda team, like, you know, a team of twenty people, did that or something. Mm. Um, 
But we didn't really hear much from like Nintendo. Clearly has games in the works, so I kind of think second half of the year is when we're just gonna get just balls to the wall. Nintendo just gonna drop at least three big games. Yeah, but we'll see. I, I I pretty I think we already know Pokemon is gonna be one of the games, but that's not Nintendo. So yeah, it's gonna be uh one of those remakes from from the original. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. I know people are hoping for let's go, let's go. It's gonna be a let's go series game. Yeah. Um so yeah, I don't I don't know. Like I guess let's end it with this, okay? What was what 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 I got out of this on the positive side is one, Nintendo Directs are back. They're not dead. Yay. Everyone thought they were dead, and Nintendo never said they were dead. They're 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 back, they're good. Uh the guy in the direct, sorry that I forgot his name, uh mentioned at the end that hey, we're gonna have more like stuff coming in the future aka hey there's going to be more directs this year they're not this isn't just a one-off there's going to be more uh so that was nice to see whether or not it's at e3 if they're even doing the e3 digital thing or if they do their own thing um because i still think they'll do something in june just feels like the right time uh so they're going to be future directs it sounds like uh maybe this is the sign that nintendo's getting back on track with their media stuff so maybe we'll start getting more regular uh, individual game directs, regular indie worlds, regular everything, regular you know partner showcases if they bring those back this year, uh, which is mm-hmm. good news. Means we're, meaning we're set up to get more news about things coming to Switch more consistently. That's one positive takeaway I got out of this. Two, uh, that Nintendo still has some surprises up their sleeves, Splatoon 3. Uh, and honestly, even if people thought Splatoon 3 could happen, who thought Mario Golf was coming? And Mario mm. Golf was coming with with a single player story mode. Like they haven't put yeah. that much effort into a sport Mario sports game. I what's it been twenty years? Maybe since Strikers. Mm, I don't I even know so. if that had a ton tennis? of effort in that one. What Mario Tennis? And yeah, but even Mario Tennis, like it. If you play the single player Mario Tennis, it's pretty canned. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't really feel like a high effort. The gameplay is great. They nailed the gameplay. It's just, Mario Tennis, they just, that, that single player mode, they just kind of dropped the ball. With yeah, it. I think the golf is the most they've done, the, from what I could tell. But it looks, I mean, we'll know when it comes out. But uh, So besides that, I mean, you know, I'm sure people will point out some other games in this, in this direct that Nintendo's publishing, but that's Nintendo publishing. That's not, uh, oh, you got his name up? Yeah. Uh, what is it again? Uh, uh, Sh- oh yeah, Shinya Takahashi. Yeah, I always forget his name. I know he's like yeah. the new guy they've been putting at the face of directs for like the last couple of years. Um, because I guess Shintaro Furukawa doesn't want to be on camera, and for some reason they don't want Doug Bowser to be like a thing. Uh, he did one show, right? One like brief little thing early on. I think it, was it the E3 2019? I think yeah. Because I remember the, he he had the Bowser joke. Yep. at the beginning. Yeah, he's like non-existent. Like publicly, <laughs> I mean, you see him come up in interviews now and then, but I mean, of course, he's a PR guy. That's mm-hmm. his primary job, so like he's going to be at interviews. But it is interesting that like I understand that oh, you know, Satoru Iwata was a very different person. He believed in personalities and people out front, and that's why him and Reggie and mm-hmm. you know uh, whatever that whatever that guy they had out in Europe as well was always um, on their on their side of things, out in front of stuff. Uh, so like um, it, that's the way Iwata was. Ever since then, they kind of kept it going under Takahashi, uh, but that, that was a transitional period. And now we're under Furukawa, and he's like, "Nope, I'm a business guy. I ain't going on camera. I'm a number." Even Doug Bowser, even Doug Bowser danced around the whole hardware thing last year. Remember that? <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, his, I remember uh, when I made a video about that. I'm like, I, I it was something like Doug, Doug Bowser does his best Reggie impression, talking about new Switch hardware. Exactly. Really, it's like you could tell he, you could tell he was under tutelage from Reggie. Classic Reggie responses, uh, saying like everything except the direct answer. Yeah, that's <laughs> the way Reggie is. Everyone loves Reggie because of the memes, and the memes are great because you don't get too many CEOs that are willing to put themselves out there and create these kind of meme moments. But it's also like Reggie knows he's toying with you, and he almost enjoyed it. 
And that's what was so great about because like you would see the sly way he smiles when he answers a question, and he knows he just talked a bunch of bullshit around <laughs> you and didn't give you the answer, and he knows that's not what you wanted to hear, and he's just like, I know what you want to hear, it's not happening. It's like, oh, I'm wearing I'm wearing this uh, Metroid pin. You think that actually means something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't speculate. I ain't telling you shit. <laughs> overall, I think this this direct is a good sign of things to come. I think it's just the beginning. I think they got a lot more to share. This is a. Can we say this is almost like a new beginning? Mm-hmm. It's a good reason. Mm-hmm. Like a post COVID kind of Nintendo, where they're getting back into the swing of things. Yep. And again, it's a good not sign. a lot of Nintendo first party games. So, future directs, we should expect more, I would assume. Yeah, they got a lot to show. Yeah. I mean, the, they don't. Again, I think they're good for the first half of the year. I think the slate looks fine. I think Switch is going to keep selling out. But after July. We need something. We got nothing right now. So come back in like five months and Nintendo will have something new for us. Another direct, another something. But hopefully sooner. Hopefully they, maybe they partake at E3 and they, and they take one of those two-hour yeah. slots they were talking about, which Nintendo, I don't know, they could fill two hours. They'll just do their normal 40-minute thing and then just do like a treehouse presentation for an hour and 20 minutes or something. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of things that end on March 31st. Remember that. So anything after March 31st, it's a fair game. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I keep thinking, you know, you get March, April, June. That's why I'm like, you know, June just feels like that month, you know. But, again, we got to see what's happening with the Pokemon company as well. Who knows? They might be packing this next six months even more, for all we know. Uh, so, all right, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed our reaction to the uh, Nintendo Direct, our first podcast back. What a way to kind of start or reboot the podcast in a way. As I call this, like, Season 2, Episode 1 or whatever, I end up calling it on Anchor.fm because it has, like, a Seasons thing you can pick. Um, thank you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the new setup with Super Mario Dave in the background. If you enjoy that, that's great. That's awesome because um, if this work didn't turn out really well in editing, uh, that's good for the future because then I can have other guests on and I can have like two guests on screen at once back here or heck, multiple TVs, multiple. I, I'm just saying, I got crazy ideas going on um, as long as my computer doesn't crash, which as you guys know when you watch my live streams, happens all the time. <laughs> Sucks when you're a PC gamer, let me tell you. All right, folks. Uh, thank you so much, Super Metal Dave, for joining us. Uh, do you have any anything you want to tell them? Social media shouts outs, where they can find you at? Uh, just Super Metal Dave 64 on YouTube and S Metal Dave on uh, 64 on Twitter. Nice. Oh, and hey, congratulations on your growth over the past year, too. You, you gained a lot of subscribers over the last year. Oh, thanks. Yeah, let's do my thing. Yeah, just doing his thing. I, it was funny. I saw a tweet from you the other day where. Uh, some people at, always ask you like, man, I wish you made videos more often. And then you're like, but if I did, they wouldn't be me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's kind, of, he's kind of a, he makes videos whenever it's something that really interests him and he has time. If he does it otherwise, if he pushes out content, I mean, that's the way it is folks. Not everyone can be like me and just be a content whore. All right. Relax. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's just, yeah, I, I find things I'm interested in. And then if I'm, if I'm doing videos, if I'm doing th- videos about everything, it's just not going to interest me as much. So I got to like pick and choose and I have limited amount of time. So yeah. And your videos are always awesome, man. I, I watch Thank you. pretty much every single video that comes out, whether I agree or disagree, it does not matter. You do a lot of research. And I, one thing I always say guys about his videos, they're always really well researched. Even if you don't like his conclusions, <laughs> Eric, that's fine. I don't think I find you on Twitter. Yeah. That's about like the only place I think they can find you. Yeah. Emo eighty seven ninety. Yep. Yeah. That's what it. Otherwise, guys, if you enjoyed this video version and you would like to have the audio version in the future because you're working out, you're on a long car ride, long commute, whatever it happens to be going on in your life that you can't watch a video version, check out Anchor.fm or any of your podcast apps, whether it's iTunes, Google Play, whatever app you're using, we're probably on it. We're on 10 different podcast apps. So you should be able to find the audio version somewhere just looking up Nintendo Prime Podcast. If you're listening to the audio version and you want to see what our new set and everything looks like in person and you've never even heard of my YouTube channel and aren't even aware that I'm a YouTuber because, hey, people might naturally discover us through the podcast, check out our channel on YouTube. Just type in Nintendo Prime on YouTube. It's the easiest way to find us. Otherwise, I think I said the wrong thing last time. I said Nintendo Prime uh, TV. It's actually Nintendo Prime YT, the official channel name, but... Um, we just go by Nintendo Prime around here. It's because I own the Nintendo Prime name on YouTube on a different account. Mm-hmm. And they won't let me transfer it to this one. Maybe if I got big enough one day, I could like strong arm them. Be like, yeah. hey, 
can I just have my Nintendo Prime name that's on an account I own? But you know what? YouTube will probably be like, oh, hey, you're that Nintendo Prime guy that uh, we didn't like your videos back in September of 2019 yeah. with all your fake, or 2020 with your fake views. Yeah, we're just going to shut you down. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks. Uh, catch you guys. Oh, you can follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Ninty Prime. Uh, we're also on Instagram, nin- Nintendo underscore Prime. Technically, we have a TikTok Nintendo Prime. <laughs> only so one funny. video on it. It's me dancing, of course. I, I like to dance. It is what it is. All right, folks. I'll catch you guys in the next podcast. So, Larry.